guys, just in the back on the campaign water. Um, so basically, what we're doing is um, me and Toby are both. We haven't done a session together for probably since the summer. So um, quite exciting. We're doing a couple of nights, three nights, and uh, I've chosen the swim. Um, you might have seen me fish before. Um, it's very quiet along this bank, and the wind is pushing right in here. And the fish they do respond to the wind in this lake. So basically, what I'm doing now is I've got this lovely little corner in this bush here. In the end. And then I'm just marking up a spot and finding the spot for tops in the waders. Because um, you wouldn't be able to hit this spot if, without the chest leaves that I've spoken of before. So basically what I'm doing is, because um, the margin is deep, he does like the catfish, and the catfish do like the margin. Um, it's starting to get to that time of year. Now what is it? That um, sort of October. So what I'm doing is I'm just finding, because there's some hard stuff and the soft, I want to sort of be between the hard and the soft. So you look, tap, 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 tap. It's a good place to bait. So... Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine and a half foot there. And that's just off the bush there. And there's some it's, there's some nice gravel. And the more the closer you get to the bush, the more gravel it gets and there's a nice bit of seal. So he's on the borderline there. Don't know if you can see the float over there. Just borderline. Just. So Toby's just baiting up his margin spot. Po he's just waded, poked himself in there. Here comes the goals. Hopefully they won't be able to get it just because it's, it's too quick. You can see where he's doing it. So what have you got in there? Let's have a look. What bait are you putting out? Tasty little mixing out. What, what, what little mix have we got in here then? So in here we've got some um, got some mixed halibut pellets, all so got, sizes. Yeah, mixed marine halibut pellets, even some big old donkey chokers there. Got some like 10, 10 millers, 8 millers, little ones, 3 millers. And then what else you got in there? So we've got some uh, salty squid, mainline boilies. These little some nice little, washed out colour. Nice little washed out ping. It's also some of Billy's CC more boilies. Some little, little mini 10 miller boilies, so that'll get them grubbing. It's a nice, nice fishy mix. Watch out, lots of boilies on look. the spot. Look at that. Nice mix. Not too much small stuff, just, just enough, you know, get them grubbing around in their margin. You, you would have heard me talking about the bird life, right? So bear in mind, we're tucked in in a massive, huge, like what, 25, 30 acre lake, right? And we're tucked in this little corner and he's been, you know, and look, seagulls are trying to get it, but they didn't get it. Heavy boilies in that, are And some marine halibut pellets. Straight down. <laughs> right, there we go. I think that, that'll do for now and you can top some up later. Welcome back to Big Girl Hunters um, on another campaign session. Uh, really excited for this one. We're now into um, sort of middle to end of October. What's the date today? Uh, 19th, I believe. 19th of October. Um, it's very, as you can see, I'm just in my t shirt. It's pretty mild for October. It has been colder, but oh, just eat, I was eating boilies earlier, just tasting them. <laughs> but, um, so the, uh, yeah, the temperature, and um, we got some low pressure again. Lots of rain forecasted, a bit of wind, um, it's a lot warmer, you know, it's sort of said it's going to be sort of 22 degrees, 
and it's like mental for like October. But we're, hopefully we'll see see what happens. Um, back in back on my campaign lake after the back on the hunt. Um, got three nights ahead of me. Um, here with my my best mate Tobbs, who you would have seen in the video before. I've fished with him a lot. We haven't done a session together for a while since France for a while because he's been you know he's been a bit busy. So uh, back in, I mean, we had, it's, it's a little bit, again, it's a, a slightly quieter. I suppose at this time of year it starts to die down a little bit. There's still a few people on, but I managed to get in, this, get in, get in a nice spot. Um, the wind, again, is pushing in here, um, which is what you want. And it's, it's not a cold wind, it's a warm, it's a warm wind. So I, I feel like the fish, I haven't seen any shows yet. Um, but again, they haven't been showing much recently. It's, this lake has been quiet for a good couple of, maybe a month now. Not much. A few biggins came out back in, about a month ago, and then that, and a few little scamps and some catties, but nothing really has been coming out. Um, so it looks like it, you know, if it's going ever going to switch on for the feed, it's now, um, which is really good. Um, so we, you know, we plotted on as I did, plotted right in the wind. Um, I know this swim well. I had a 30 out of it, and a, it's multiple other fish. So we're, uh, I know this spot's really well. It's about 80 yards out um, in some nice deep silt. There is a bar about 40, 50 yards out, but you know, I like to be past that. Um, and uh, fish, fishing in, in the nice deep silt opposite the spit, boilies everywhere. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna give them a little bit of a mix. I've just been on straight boilie, but I'm just gonna because I've had, had a couple of duff sessions, really learnt a lot. But um, I feel like maybe a few more, maybe a little bit, of, just a little bit of sweet corn, um, maybe a little bit of pellet might because you know you would have seen me using lots of different ingredients in my, in my mixes and stuff but um, this time of year normally straight boilie but we'll see how it goes I'll just start off with the boilie I just want to just spark a bit of reaction don't want any catfish and I don't want any bream um, so we'll see what happens I'll leave the bream and the cats to Tom <laughs> right guys so it's getting it's uh, afternoon now and it's getting to that time where I'm and sort of I've already found my spots. I found my spots this morning, and um, I've just been waiting, fishing out. Um, I, this morning, I um, whacked out a couple of singles, um, just on the spots, just to see if I can nick a quick bite. Obviously, didn't didn't have nothing happen, which is normally the case here on here in the mornings. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do, um, these are, you would have seen me using this rig before. Uh, it's a uh, fluorocarbon. There you can see that for a carbon rig um, on a D, and I use, like I said, explain. I use a um, a micro ring swivel rather than just a micro swivel. Got a little medium-sized sinker there, and the all-important um, anti-tangle sleeve. Um, this is 15 pound fluorocarbon. Um, sinks well, sits beautiful, and it. it I steam it so it's look at that look how look how beautiful that is and that I mean even for a stiff material it will still set over things so anyway what's been as you would have seen I use these mini snowman presentations so it's sort of like half a pop-up with um, three quarters of a of a bottom bait and um, so which has obviously been the nutcracker um, and I've been using with the nutcracker pop-ups the white ones um, but you know what I'm gonna do this time I'm here for I'm here for three nights so I'm just gonna mix it up and and try three different colours. Um, it's a method that I always use. I was I was just going with the white because the white was doing me so well. But I've had a couple of sort of dodgy sessions, so I'm going to mix it up. It is a, you know getting later on in the year, so we we change it up. These are the different options that I've got. Um, so this is this is the bottom bait. Believe it or not, this is one of these these nutcrackers. Um, they are amazing by themselves. But this is this is bottom bait, 18 millers, and that's actually been um, soaking up in like a caramel goo type liquid um, made it I don't you know I'm, I'm not sure how much I know the um, I've done very well with with cell all gooed up in this caramel stuff but um, you know I'm so so confident in the nutcracker I don't know if it's going to make a much difference it, it's certainly not going to make it any worse so I've got that and that will wash out back to that normal color because what I didn't like what at first I was like oh it's a bit dark but it does wash out to that to that lovely light color um, it doesn't really matter if it's not. It doesn't. It wouldn't wash out because I'm putting a tipper on it. Um, so these are these are the three different options um, that I'm using for the tipper. First one is the um, the matching pop up, um, the white. This is my favourite colour at the moment. Um, the white seems to be doing the biz. What well, has been doing the biz? 
it in the past for me. So done really, on early, early spring, I did really well on yellow, and then white sort of came into its own. Um, pink, um, really, really bright. That's all almond up. Um, God, it stinks. But yeah, really, really visual, that one. Really good for the winter. It's October, not quite winter yet. And then I've got my old faith. I've had these for like 10 years. I've caught in every single lake I've ever fished with these pop-ups. I don't know if I can ever get any more of them. And they're not quite as buoyant as some of the modern ones, but yeah. And they're, they're all I've got. Precious little beauties. But they're not quite maybe as high vis as the modern ones, but they're just that nice yellow, which, you know, I'm going to put a little bit of corn out matching it. So yeah, that's that's the option. I'll just show you how to do it. Um, so get your, uh, your Stanley. Eh? You know my friend Stanley? <laughs> bit of a football factory quote there. Um, this can be messy, obviously, because the goo. And I like to use pot lid. If I can find a. Here we go. And you want to, you want to cut just a little quarter off. That get a nice cut like that. What should we do? What, what should I show you? The pink, the messy one. These pop-ups are mainline pop-ups. They're actually clockwork orange. I don't think it really matters because they're all gooed up. Like I've used the milky toffee ones gooed up. But um, these are insanely... Oh, that's got a hole in that one. Allow that one, lad. <laughs> so, this you, you just want to cut this in half. So the other one, you want to cut a quarter off and this one in half. You can see that that goo's gone pretty much right through it. It normally an orangey colour. So there we go, and that can just go back into the pot and get even more gooed up. Then, oh bloody this, that goo. Right, next step is you've got your uh, bait floss. I like the quarter one. It melts down really well. on there just make nice and flat get a good cut you see that the wind's just picking up Jesus Luna. and I will show you later on in the video how to actually tie one of these rigs because I know a few people have problems tying the tying the whipping knot um, a mate of mine uses this rig but he buys the ready-made ones from Cordo because it's a Danny Fairbrass the DF Danny Fatass, as my dad calls him. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding, Dan. You're a lad. Anyway. So, yeah, you get it on. Bait faucet like that. See that? And then you pull it right down onto barrel. But you still want, you know, both the loops showing. And then you just go in with a couple of overhands. One, I like to do two, just just as a nice little, because it kind of digs in the pop-up a little bit. And then the third one, pull down, and then you get your little bait stop. I like using these, these are just, I can't even remember where I got them from, they're just some cheapos, but they, uh, they're nice and clear and they don't get in the way. And they, they sort of blob down a little bit as well, which makes them really cool. Don't, some of them I've used because I blob always blobbing stuff. They sometimes oh, Are you on the left? Is it on the left? Then? I think so. All right, so yeah, some of them they, they can sort of melt, and you can really smell the plastic. These ones they don't set, tend to smell as much, and I think the fish can smell that melted plastic smell, which I'm really paranoid about. that up. One more. Four knots all together. God, I just got that on my lip. I'm blatant and look like I've got lipstick on. And then you get your lighter. You see that? Like, it's really solid and it, it doesn't, you would think that slips and stuff, but it doesn't. I mean, um, and that, it, it does, it acts like a wafter. Um, 
I have got um, the Nutcracker wafters, but um, they're a little bit dark in colour, which I'm not so keen on. Bit of feedback for Terry Dempsey there, because I love the bait, but I'm not sure about the wafters. Too much cork in it, so they um, they look too dark, and it's just a personal thing. These ones here, look. Because admittedly, I want a wafter, you know, like in the past when I was on mainline, I used a hybrid wafter, but these are the Nutcracker wafters, and if you see, the Nutcracker does wash out really well, and it washes out almost to that colour, which is which is the pop up, which is why it works so well as a combo. But look, it's dark, and I've tested it. I have fished it. It doesn't tend to wash out as much. It's because it's got all this cork. Um, so there's a bit of feedback. Probably tell me to fuck off, but <laughs> there's a bit of feedback. Um, smell nice though. I'm sure. I'm sure that they're fine. It's just me being paranoid. Um, right. So there we go. There's, there's the rig and I would have shown you this before but what I just do is I uh, PVA tape it and this is just so it doesn't ev you know you're fishing these bigger fish waters and you know one, the next bite could be your target fish um, you know there is some smaller ones in there but there's, a, there's you know the, the one that, you know it could be your target fish and you don't you know you want every single thing to go in your way so it's like people oh why, why bothering taping it up because because I want to do you know I mean, I've had people comment to me and be like, why, why, you know what I mean? What's the point? Why not? Why not make every every single percentage counts? And it's the little things that make the biggest difference. Like PVA taping up your hair. <laughs> so, do with a little knot, thread she fruit. Get it into position. that wind. Now they're not going down the rain. Because I, I like to keep that shape of the D, I like to not, I like to do it there. There we go, look. If you PVO tape it on the D, it ruins the shape of that lovely D. Um, so yeah, just there. And you know, and you can sort of just and you know that's going to be sitting proud, sitting pretty, waiting to catch the the big girl. Trim off that excess. Being careful not to trim off your any of your rig because you've made, spent so long making it, or spent so much money on it, buying it if you buy them. Nothing wrong with buying rigs. No problem in people that buy rigs. Yeah, there, there she is. Looks a bit stiff in that, but there is actually quite a lot because it's obviously PVA. But there's a lot of movement on it, and that's just going to go out. And it, you know, I I feel the lead down, and it will drop, and it just flutter down, and it will sit like if I get one of the other rigs. Well, I can't really, but it, yeah, it just sits like that basically. Size four hook, which is quite heavy as it is, so it just sits up like that. You know, with that sight, just bang fished over a load of boilies it just seems to be doing me the, the business this year so great great rig you know the with fluorocarbon it ain't gonna tangle i'm fishing in softer silt so not fluorocarbon but it's a long length um, it's quite hard underneath it and it's just it's fine um i was a bit worried about it but then you know i had 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 caught some good fish had some, every hook hold i've ever hooked a fish i haven't dropped a fish on this rig yet and every hook that i've had um and you would have seen in another video um with the green cap green cap is off the rig <laughs> but yeah every hook hold is just bang on and that you won't lose a fish in this it's nailed extra razor sharp hook and uh, there we go Oh, this water is colder than what it was. And so it begins. The menu tonight, minted lamb burgers. These little beauties, so I have to show you it. I don't know what mate they are, but I don't know, they're shit mate, birds are, I think. But 
frozen ones and they keep longer. Tastes nice though. Yeah. I don't know. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, well, they're lamb grills, but they're just <laughs> lamb burgers. And they, they're candy because they come in this plastic. So the rats don't get the smell. There we go. Bird's eye, <laughs> minted lamb grills. Get on. <laughs> Good lad. Kind of does look like shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, it really is <laughs> recording. Duh. <laughs> so what have we got here? Duh, roasted chicken breast with our spicy Mexican rice. <laughs> nice. Very nice. And Billy's on the flakes, man. Mm. Better dessert. Better dessert. <laughs> Good lad. Cooking oh, up some of Flaking off gorgeous. Just mind you being a kid, doesn't it? Yeah, mate. Oh, nice 99s. Yeah, mate. 50p, mate, for four and the other yeah. stuff. Good lad. Fucking hell. I feel like fucking hell. You know? Can't beat a bit of hot food, mate. Good morning. Um, so I've just done the first night back on a uh, campaign water, and uh, nothing to report as of yet. Um, one of Toby's rods had quite a bit of activity last night. Um, not sure what was going on there. Might have been, might have been liners, but um, so far it's been very quiet. Um, Wint, Wint spoke to the lad down there. He has, he's he packed up now. No, nothing, nothing's come out last night. It has been really quiet down there recently. Um, even though we've been uh, faced with some really warm weather the last 24 hours, it's, uh, I thought it might switch on. As of yet, it hasn't. I haven't really. I've seen a few fish just knocking their heads out uh, um, on my spot or a little bit further than my spot. Um, but to be honest, they're just bream. I think just 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 rolling. But apart from that, I haven't seen anything. Didn't hear any. I was awake all night. Could not sleep. Too hot in my new bag. And. Uh, Toby's rod was keeping me awake because it was every five minutes just doing my nutting. Bream probably, I don't know what it was, but um, so that was that. And I woke up, still time to get a bite now, but um, it's, I, I can already tell it's going to be another tough session, so just going to have to m might reel in a bit later, try some zigs, I don't know, maybe go for a stalk, I'm not quite sure what's going on yet, I need to, need to see, see what's happening. So it's, uh, it's one of them sessions, man seem to be hitting a, a bit of a dry spell for the for the big fish front at the minute they can't seem to get get amongst any any good ones I mean it's a good really good time of year for carp fishing and then everyone else you look at the papers and everyone else is having good results but this place is just shut up shop a little bit can't seem to figure out why but, uh, you know uh, I'll show you some few bits so I'm gonna do do a few videos in a, a bit later show you how to tie the rig that, I, that I'm using a few people have asked me that and some leg core stuff and bits and bobs so uh, yeah take it easy tight lines right I'm gonna talk rig now and uh, I'm just gonna talk you through the tying up of this rig and um, this is the rig I've been using um, a lot this season and um, from summer onwards it's my body fishing rig um, when I'm not fishing pop-ups um, it's like a fluorocarbon and um, D rig with a micro ring swivel see it spin around spins around like that and that's a wafter so not crack a wafter and it would just sit like that on the bottom ready to be copped I've got a anti-tangle sleeve there as well and I'm just going to show a lot of people struggle to tie um, I don't know if you can see this part uh, that little knot there um, I'll just show you how to do that uh, it's quite tricky but once you get used to it um, I've been doing it doing it for a while this is a rig that um, you might have seen Danny Fairbrass or some of the Corder lads using, but it's not that's not his invention, it's been around for years. Um, just a fluorocarbon D rig. It's just with the new sort of micro ring swivels and things, it's uh, just taking it to the next level because not only can, can it slide, because you used to just use a ring on this rig, not only can it slide that way, you know, it can spin that way. So it's very, very deadly. And because the fluorocarbon's got hot, you know. It's a little bit loose, but it's a bit stiffer. You know, it doesn't have to move much before it hits the lead, and you nail them. You you don't really lose it. You know, um, it might not be maybe the quickest pricking rig, or 
it's not very good for like weed and stuff but you know when the conditions are right this is there's no better when you're fishing over boilie so there we go I'm going to show you how to tie it so just put that one down there these are the components that you need um, it's actually it seems quite a complicated rig but it's not really that complicated and um, quite quick to tie really you know fussing around with shrink tubing or anything like that um, so you start off with um, what, IQ too. This is IQ. This is um, a 15 pound. You can use 20 after the 15 because it's just slightly. You pull off more than what you need. I always let's get that. So I've got about I don't know 18 inches or so. And I'll just do this first. Careful, don't not to burn your hands. Ah, like that, I nearly burned my hands then. So. You just go like that, and this just makes it nice and supple and nice to work with. Watch, watch your teeth though, because I've fucked my teeth up over the years doing things like this. But fuck it. <laughs> now look at that. Now look, it's supple and just beautiful. So the hook I'm using is um, this is a curved shank style hook. It's a size four. It's a bit of a beast of a hook, but um, you know, big hooks. I'm a big fan of fan of big hooks. Uh, once they go in, they stay in. They ain't coming out. Drop that off. So, you've got the little cat member to take that off. <laughs> so, what you do is you make a loop like that, big loop, in your, in your fluorocarbon, carbon, like that. And you get it that side of the hook, can you see? So, most of the material is sticking out this side. Normally, it would be the other side. Like for chod rig, would be the other side. And if you're not doing, and this knot is far better for chod rigs as well, because um, you don't have to put the material through the eye three times, just twice. So then you get this end of the loop, and then you go once around like that, and then you whip down one, two, three, four, five, six. I like six. I've messed around with five, fours, and then you get this, this little tag end, and you pull it. Don't pull it too tight yet. You can see. So what you do is you now you got this. You got the knot there. You pull this round. I like it directly. Sometimes a little, but directly. Can you see in point with the barb? Um, and obviously, if it's a barbless, where the barb would be. Um, and then you wet it. Make sure that it's facing. But make sure that this bit is coming off the back of the shank and tighten. Make sure it's nice and tight. Oh, it's perfect. So then what you do now is you snip off that bit there. Yeah, here's a little tip for you. Eh? It's really important that that is coming directly off the, the point and that's slightly off centered so what you can do because that knot is once it's bedded down is you just gently tease it with, with one of these I know that sounds a bit a bit risky I mean this is pretty much almost perfect but you just slide it around there look. don't damage it or anything and that is just absolutely perfect that never slips so then the next step <laughs> is I'm a big fan of these fox ones um, I like the colour of them it's a micro ring swivel I suppose it would be a size what 11 maybe um, but they're just a micro um, ring swivel and you pop that on there now all the way down And then through the back and this is how you create your D right so now you've made your D now it's time to do your knotless knot so one two three four five six making sure to keep this nice and tight like that Check the position, make sure it's all aligned like that. And that's pretty much formed 
the rig. Next stage is to pop on your sinker. There we go. Pop that right down for now. That's a medium sized one, that one. And to finish it off, pretty much, is anti tangle sleeve. This one I've got like the clay coloured one here. It's a nice all round colour, really. It blends in really well. It's like a trans sort of khaki type colour. That on. Check for the length. I want mine about ten inches. And then just do figure of eight loop knot, which can be quite tricky with this fluorocarbon, but there we go. Wet it down. Pull both taggings together first I find best. And then tighten. I sometimes do these, cut these down to eight inches as well. And if they're really hard gravel, even even, because you, I feel like this sort of size. And then you pull that up to there, pull the sinker to the middle. You can get real tech and just slide it right in the middle. And then just to finish it off, get a nice little bit of putty. And you wrap around the sinker. This just helps kick everything back out, reset itself, and also just pin down to the bottom, making sure it's all sealed away from the fish's view. Fluorocarbon's pretty good anyway, it's quite heavy, but this just helps. I think this helps with the cast and kicking it away as well. Just get that nice in there. And there's, uh, there she is. The rig, the finished piece. You pop your boilie on. Um, I'd say, I mean, you, you, people. I've seen people in the past using this was just bottom bait. So I'd say it has to be um, a wafter or a critically balanced bait. So it basically, like, like I showed you, it sits up above. Basically, what happens is it it drops down and then it sits like that. Pretty much hides the hook as well. So it's just ready cocked and it just goes up. And then nails them. If you see how aggressively this this rig turns every time, just just turns every single time because of the because of the fluorocarbon. Bang! And it's real. It's a real deep. It's always real deep. Bang in the bottom mouth every time. Every single time in the bottom mouth. And then hooks are sharp. And there we go. There's the rig for you. Right, so, Toby. Morning, guys. So he's finally after, I don't know, we were working, I don't know, maybe 15, I don't know, maybe 18 nights on the Campaign Lake, and he's finally had his first carp. Uh, how big? £25, pound, one mirror. £25, pound, one ounce. Uh, it's a beauty. Look at the ch chestnut colours on it. What, tell us the tactics and, and what you caught it on. So, um, what do we catch it? About 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock this morning. Um, there's about 14 wraps out, just on just on some heavy silt. Chunky fish. Uh, nice chunky fit. This rig I was using, it was a size eight, size eight new crank hook, just on an un entrap soft. Um, had a salty krill, little boily, tipped with a bit of pink, pink, pink corn. Nice. So, well, um, just popping up. Just pop, pop hey. Good skills, good handling. Get some, yeah. Let's get some nice photos and let's get some water shots and then we'll talk about a little bit more about the capture after. Nice Go for it. Alright guys, so just in the water, 
Right, 20 pound, 25 pound, one ounce, one ounce mirror. There we go, what a beauty. Nice ringwood, ringwood carp. Some beautiful scales on there, look. Beautiful golden colour. It's got a lovely pearly scale there. Nice immaculate fish, chunky fish. Nice, there we go. Put her back now. Yeah, watch her go back. Oh. So well behaved, aren't she? Yeah. <laughs> Off to the depths. There we go. So, I thought I saw some feeding fish just, just a little bit further down in the margin. So, still quite early yet, but it's got the polaroids on, and the boots on. Climbed up this tree, to see if I can see anything, and there's some bubbling. I can't see anything because it's a little bit deep down there, but I thought I might be able to see some shadows. But it's a, certainly a good tip if you can get up the trees and, and <laughs> have a look at what's going on. Obviously, Tessa is not rotten, and don't be climbing up any corners of trees because they're dead. Oh, you can see a lot from that, don't you? Real high up there. Right, quick update guys, just had this beauty, um, little chunky mirror, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, really rare on here to get, get them in the day, especially at this time, um, I, I, hey, she's angry, there we go, was it 21, so basically the story about this one is, um, if, you, if you show the camera out there where the island is, about an hour ago, Maybe not even now, 40 minutes. I saw some fish yeah. showing real long range, probably 120. So I uh, brought it in, put a stiffing hinge rig on with a real bright pop-up, all gooed up, and just blasted it out there. And um, half an hour later, she rolls off with this beauty. And uh, hoist them up one more time for you. And there you go, a little opportunist bite because, old school. <laughs> what a crap, what, 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 a, what a beauty. There you go. Nice one. There we go. Let's give it a little goodbye kiss. Bye bye, my love. And off she goes. Opportunist fish, come on. Right, you would have seen I just caught that, that little opportunist fish and um, I brought, I saw some fish showing at, if you could, out at range. Um, you know, I was probably fishing about 80 and um, they're more sort of 1, 120. So basically what, what I've done is I brought, I brought one in and changed it to a sif inch rig, put one, a bright pop up on, put a load of um, stuff on it and just smashed it out. And this, this is a, um, a really good, I mean, I'm all about baiting up the air and finding the spots, getting them on the bait, but it's a really good tactic to get quick bites. Um, you're only ever as good as your last bite anyway so uh, if you just you know what so basically this is um bilgrim rig that you would have seen before and um, it's a it's a you know you can the good thing about it basically what i've done is i've put pulled the um sinker down to there so now it's a pop-up rig and it's almost like the so it just sits sits like there so basically what i've done is i've got a this is um a pop-up um which has been soaking in um almond goo so what you do um this stuff, um, so I don't know how many times uh, you know I've, I've had a dead day and I've whacked just a gooed up hook bait out, and then it's just roared off. Um, you know I don't believe a hype about a lot of baits, but I don't, I don't know about all of them, but certainly this one, this Armandy one, 
um, certainly does the business for me. It's done done me well. But so, look, <laughs> it's pink hands. So you know, if you see showing fish, get a bright. Even even if it's not, you know, everyone's associated bright hook baits with winter fishing. You know, just um, you know, smash one out, do it up, and smash it out, and uh, hopefully you'll you'll uh, get on the fish. Right guys, just had this one, it's the wee hours of the night, I think it's about 12 o'clock, just ripped off, funny occurrence, um, just on a, on a nutcracker, drilled out the, with, a, with a bit of cork in it, because I felt like a, you know, taking the freebies but not my hook bait, so I wanted to match the hatch and there we go, it's a 18 pound uh, and 15 ounce, it almost scraped a 19, nice, almost linear, scaly ringwood mirror, there we go. Right, good morning guys. This is uh, my alarm going off, right? So it's, what time is it? 6.30, um, no, cause, uh, and it's still obviously pitch black because we're in October, near the end of October, and uh, it's uh, time time to go in and out. I've got an hour to pack down everything, get the bivvy down, and then uh, and, then, and then get off. Um, got, got to be, often got to go to work and bits and bobs, so you've got to get off early. Um, pretty hardcore but that's the way it goes so a little round up it's been a busy night um, overall as you would have seen I had that mirror and a bit of bit of a craziness um, last night uh, so I can't remember what time was it 12 o'clock was it uh, yeah 12 o'clock um, guy comes up from just up the way and uh, he, he wants me to uh, to help him um, weigh a fish and, and take some photos for him um, and it, it turns out to be my target fish um, at, at, at 36, I can't remember the, the ounces, 36 pounds, I can't remember the ounces, but um, and I took some nice photos for it and uh, so it is gaining up in weight, it does get up to 40, so it was nice to see it packing on some weight at such an early stage, it gotten, it's put on three pounds in like a month, um, which is awesome, so uh, that, that's looking good. And um, you know he was buzzing. Um, he's been fishing it for eight years, and, and it took him ages to get it. And he's had it twice now in, the, in this year, so he's doing better than me so far. Trying to get that one. Um, and then the guy to my right, right, uh, he's been fishing. I think he said he did. He's done 24 nights without a fish, and he had his first fish, which was um, 28, a common, and that's his PB as well. So it's been. So we had Toby's PB, guy PB over there, PB next door. So it's three PBs in like 24 hours, and it's a. Uh, Start this fishing really well, and I don't really want to go home, but um, that's the way it goes. So, uh, so I don't think I do anything anything different. Um, I managed to catch one off the spot. Um, a little trick I'll show you on another video, which is nice, which proved proved my theory um, that they are eating a lot of the bait that we're putting out there, and they're not taking the hook baits. Because I feel like I put a lot, you know a lot of people put a lot of bait out, um, and then some they're, they're being finicky on, you know whether it's uh, a bright bait or, or, or um, you know sort of. A, I always like to put a bit of a colour, a white or a pink or a yellow or whatever, but it seems to be not, not the way, so we'll talk about that another time. And uh, yeah, that's it now. I hope you I hope you enjoy the video. And uh, like, don't forget to subscribe and like and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, take it easy, tight lines.